Good evening, my dear listeners. Our today's midweek service is brought to you by Reverend Charles Akule Ntoivai, the Superintendent Minister Kawangware Circuit. Today, we are going to get our text that will lead us in our today's sermon from the book of uh, Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. Before I read, let us pray. Almighty God, in Jesus' name we do pray and thank you for all the blessings you have given to us. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. We do pray that, Father, in the power of your Holy Spirit, you help us to exercise them to the glory of your holy name. Help, help me uh, this evening, O oh Lord, to be used of you, so that, Father, you can give us the very one you want us to hear tonight to help us and learn to teach us and to give us all the knowledge we need so that we can be able to know the gifts you have given to each and every one of us and how we can apply them so that long they can be productive and they can be to the glory of your holy name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I will read our text. For I will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted them with property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them and remained five talents more. So also he who and the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid the master's money. Now, after a long time, the master of the servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the, the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he who also and the two talents came forward, saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here I have made two talents uh, more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the kingdom of your master. He who had received the one talent came forward, saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not, uh, where you scattered not. So I was a friend, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master answered him, You, weakened and slothful servant, 
you knew that I reap where I have not uh, sown and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and, and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has, uh, who has will more be given, and he who have an abundance. But from one, from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away and cast the worthless, and cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There ends our today's uh, reading. The theme of our today, today's reading is in search of whole life stewardship. In our theme, there are some ones we need to get their meaning first before we continue with the word. The first word is search. The meaning of the uh, search is carefully examine something for something that is hidden. The other one is whole. When we talk of our whole, it means something or of something, the entire, or something not divided or broken. Life means from the time one is born until his death or our death. Stewardship means the way in which one organizes and looks after something. So when we talk, in, or we talk of such of our whole life stewardship, it is something that you and me will take as the whole of our life. It will take the whole of our thinking. It will take the whole of our energies so that we will be able to examine and bring out what is ending and bring it whole and let it be known and be seen so that it can be of help to us and to other people. When we remember what we have already learned about the master who left the talents with his servant, we see the first man given five talents. And before we go very far, I would like us to uh, understand the word talent too. A talent means a gift. And a talent, sometimes it is also equated in terms of money. In the olden days, during the time of Old Testament, one talent was equal to about 20 years of wages of a laborer. And in terms of money, uh, currently as we see it, in 2011, in USA dollar, one dollar is 600,000. So the person who was given five dollars he was given quite a lot of money. You multiply $600,000 with five, um, five, uh, uh, five, uh, five talents. And you find how much will that be. And that gentleman went and worked and brought more five talents. And he had ten talents. The same case to the one who was given to. What does this mean to you and to me? And what was Jesus trying to teach to the people of that time and the people of today? Jesus was teaching the people of that 
time and today that God has given us gifts that we can use in the work he has given to each one of us. Doing the work of God is like one doing a business, whereby you have to bring in more to his, uh, to his, uh, to his store. And the, the store of God is his church. When we talk of talent and talk of gifts, we examine the gifts one has. Those who have got the gifts of teaching, they should teach and let others know the secrets of the word of God so that they can bring them in into the church of God. Those who have got the gift of uh, knowing how the world looks like, like the geographers, they should use that, uh, that talent to know where crops can grow well, to know where to get minerals, to know where to get um, other valuables that we could use for this life to make people live peacefully. For those who have got the gift of science, they need to explore it so that they can bring in discoveries that can help us to progress. We have seen so many discoveries that have been made, but those who have made it, some are not Christians, and though they have brought things that have helped the world, still they have ignored the word of God. But I remember one, one scientist by the name of Collins, who learned the scientists in, in, in USA for 10 years, from 19, 1996, and they were trying to find out where life comes from, the life of a human being. But then, when they worked for those 10 years, they did not know where that, that life comes from. Later, when they hit the rock, it is sent in Bouncing back and wrote a book entitled The Language of God. And I was meant to learn that he is even now a Christian and is working to teach what he knows about God to other scientists so that they can know God. So my dear friends, look at what the gift that God has given you tonight and ask yourself, how do I use this gift? Search that gift and once you will know it wholly, apply it to your life. Try to put it into action so that you can be able to care for others because stewardship is caring for the property that belongs to you and the property that belongs to other people. So when the Israelites were called to give what they had, they were brought so that the talent God gave them, they can bring the Gentiles into the kingdom of God. But then the Jews failed to use their talent they were given, the gift of being the children of God, the gift of being near God and taught the word of God so that they may know the truth and live by the truth. And then that truth should be taught to others so that when others know, they would also come to God and believe in God. So tonight... When we are talking of the talent, we are talking of the gifts each and every one of us has been given so that we can exercise the responsibility and the energy God has given us so that we can let others know the truth, so that we can let others know our God who has provided us with these gifts. That is what the two young people did, the one given the five talents and the one given the two talents. But there is this gentleman who was given one talent. He went and he hid. And he thought that his master was hard. He was able to do anything and he didn't do anything. 
when he was called to bring in what he had worked for, this is how he answered his master. Master, I earned your talent because I knew you are a hand and you are able to gather even where you are, you are not planted, even where you are not put the seed. And his master said, this is a bound servant. Take from him what he has and give to the one who hung the ten talents. What does this mean by hiding? Hiding means refusing to use the talents that God has given to you. He wanted to protect the talent for his master so that it could not go to somebody else. My dear friends, my dear uh, listeners, there are those who know the word of God, but when they are come to give the truth, because they don't want uh, to tell the truth, because they fear a thing here and a thing there, they try to protect what they know and they don't release it out to others, even if it means you being victimized or you being or you, you being losing something. There are such Christians and those who try to protect the little they know, they don't like sharing with those who are not Christians. So for you and for me, we are called to share everything. In the book of Deuteronomy, uh, chapter 23, verses 19, we see the Israelites were advised to train and then they should not trend with their own Israelites and get interest. But they had to trend and get interest with the Gentiles. What does that mean? It means already the Gentiles, they knew the word of God. And so they should not continue preaching the gospel of the Jesus Christ among themselves. They were given that one so that they can get interest from the Gentiles. When they worked hand and brought Gentiles in, it meant bringing interest into the kingdom of God. What interest are you working to bring tonight? What interest am I working to bring to God tonight? Yes, I'm a Christian. Am I ready to preach to, the, uh, to, the, to those who are, uh, who are in the religion of Islam? Am I ready to preach to those who are in the religion of Buddhism? Am I ready to preach to those who are in the, who are in the other religions like cult and let them know the truth? Do I have time to fellowship with them and share a word of God with them? Tonight, God is calling you and he is calling me to use the very talent he has given me so that I can bring interest into the house of the Lord so that I can bring someone who is not a Christian to be a Christian so that I can bring someone who doesn't know the word of God to know the word of God so that I can make each and everyone know the truth which they don't know which is, in the, which is hidden in the word of the Lord the work that the God has given to you and to me tonight, that is the talent. We need to pray to our God so that he can give us that talent. Let us look at the book of Judges, chapter 4. When you read it from verse 1 to verse 7, you see the, prophet, the prophetess Deborah. Deborah had been given three talents, and she used it so well. She was a prophetess. She was a civil leader and she was a judge who used to judge the, 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 the Jews in their legal cases. And here when the Jews were put into a captivity, into the rulership of Njabin, Deborah was to was then to call Barak so that she could use her the three talents and she used it so well when the children of Israel cried to God and repented, and Jews were able to be saved by Deborah, by using her three talents. 
my dear friend, because I know there are some issues that are too hard to be approached. Deborah could not lead the army because she was a woman. And in Jewish state, a woman cannot lead, could not lead the army by then. That is why she called Mbarak, so that Mbarak could lead the army of the Lord. Tonight, my dear friend, try to search your heart and find out how many talents God has given you. There are those who have been given five, there are those who have been given ten, there are those who are even given twenty, and others are given one. The march you are given is the march that the Lord is demanding from you tonight. As I try to conclude, let me say this. If someone could work for 20 years and offer all that to God, wholly without reducing anything out of it, because we search and give it wholly in stewardship. We don't have to give in halves. We give all our energy. We give all what we have so that we can gain interest for our God. My question is this. Have you searched your life so that you can know what God has given you there and offer it wholly to the, to the stewardship of God? Because everything that is here in this world belongs to God. Nothing belongs to you and nothing belongs to me. Not even my life, not even your life. We have been given to take care and that's why it is for you and for me to know the talents have been given so that I can take whole responsibility that will make me account to it in the best way and in best of my abilities so that together with the first and the second I will be told you good servant who is faithful enter into the joy of your master. Are you preparing to be told enter into the joy of your master? Or you won't be protected, hide your talents, and you will not be able to tell the truth. You will not uh, give your, yourself to share with the people you know they are not friendly to you. And then later, you will be told, you, uh, you are a servant who is unfaithful and idle. Bring what you have, and it will be given to the ones who have got many and then you'll be put in a place where you will uh, gnash your teeth and be in great pain. So tonight, the good news I'm bringing to you, my dear listeners, is that God has given you talent and has given you time to research and know. Just the same way a science researches and everyone who is working to know something somewhere has to find that end and something takes time and brings out his discoveries. And when he brings, that benefits him and other human beings. May God bless you. May God bless me as we research our hearts and know what God has put there. What kind of gifts? They might be three like that of Deborah, that of prophetess, that of being a civil leader, that of being a giant, and she was able to combine the three, and she became a help to the Israelites when they were being oppressed. Are you ready to bring freedom to those who are oppressed because of using your talents well? And if you know there is a place where you cannot be able to apply them, you yourself, you look for someone whom you can use and apply, as Deborah used Barak to make his gifts be fruitful to the children of God and to the glory of God. May we learn from Deborah so that we can be active, we can do what is expected of us so that now we can bring interest to the house of God 
for the talents that each and every one of us has been given. Amen. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for the one. May you continue giving us power to be able, Lord, to look into ourselves and see the gifts, the talents you have given to each one of us. And when we know, give us that courage, give us that power to go and put it into action, just the way you gave Deborah. Deborah, when she knew she could not do, there was something she was unable to do, through her talent of leadership, she looked Barak, and Barak did what she was not able to do, and they were able to save Israelites. Help us today, O oh Lord, so that we can be productive wherever one is, through the talents that you have given to us, so that, Lord, we can apply them to the blessings of the kingdom, to blessings of your kingdom. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.